Now we're talking about Nigerians struggling under the yoke of price hikes. The removal of fuel subsidy in May 2023 led to a dramatic increase in petrol prices from about 185 naira per litre to over 500, with some areas seeing prices as high as 700 naira per litre. This has significantly impacted transportation, food prices and overall inflation. The Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission, NERC, raised electricity tariffs for Band A customers by 240% from 68 naira per kilowatt to 225 naira per kilowatt starting April 2024. This hike aims to save 1.5 trillion naira by removing subsidies but has increased household expenses. Now, starting September 1, 2024, the cost of Nigerian passports have increased, with the 32-page booklet rising from 35,000 naira to 50,000 naira, and the 64-page booklet from 70,000 naira to 100,000 naira to maintain passport quality and integrity. So we're talking about a whole lot of hikes for Nigerians. Now, joining us to discuss this is Shegun Shukwiton. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Rume. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so price hike. We've seen price hike in almost every sector. So from the petroleum sector, um, obviously, electricity sector. In fact, it was almost in the finance sector as well because they tried to introduce cybersecurity levy. Um, and that did not take full swing and it was taken out. Um, and now we're even seeing uh, having to renew your, your Nigerian passport has been increased from 35 to 50 and 70 to 100 respectively. Now, I want to just ask because... You are also a Nigerian and living in Nigeria. How has it been for you so far with all of this increase? Because for me, I don't think it's been the best. And I'm sure a lot of people are complaining. And that's the reason why we had the end bad governance um, protest. But for you, looking at all these hikes, um, everything that's been happening, having to manage your household, how has it been for you? I mean, look, like, like every Nigerian, um, it's been a very rough ride. Um, I must say, mm. um, you, you, what, what, what you have had to do as a Nigerian and, and, Abo, and I, myself included is you've had to make changes. You know, you've had to make adjustments. You've had to make trade-offs. Um, you've had to make very significant lifestyle changes, um, make sacrifices, uh, and some of them not necessarily positive. Uh, you know. In, in a lot of instances, things that you would normally do that are very important to you, to your health, to your well-being, to your happiness, you've had to let go of them just simply because they are now too expensive. Uh, people can no longer buy drugs. So when you are doing, when you are reeling out the list of things that have um, gone up, um, I think you forgot to mention drugs, you know. Um, and it's gotten to a point now where uh, if, you have, if you're an asthmatic patient, for example, um, it's it simply become, you know, prohibitively expensive, almost unsustainable uh, to buy your inhalers, you know, um, and so many other drugs. Uh, the other day, I was looking for, um, I think is um, uh, this uh, old acetate, and I just couldn't find it. I visited about five pharmacies, and I couldn't find it because uh, my wife needed it because she had a cold. And eventually, you know, I had to buy an alternative. Um, and I asked the pharmacist friend who I eventually bought the alternative from, what's going on? And they said it's become too expensive, that they can't stock it anymore. Nobody was buying it, so they had to stop stocking it, you know. And this is the reality that Nigerians are facing today, you know, the, the cost of health care. We go to hospitals now, uh, hospitals are cutting corners, hospitals can no longer run their generators, even though, you know, they need you know, uh, to maintain a cold chain uh, environment to keep some of their drugs, you know, and vaccines and all of that, you know. So it's, 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 been, it's been a rough ride. <laughs> and without wanting to exaggerate, you know, it's, it's been a rough ride for everybody. Um, so, so we adjust, and uh, people have adjusted, and people are trying to find a way. You, when you spoke about petrol, for example, um, as you know, you know, petrol is not only expensive, it's not even available. So the other day I had to buy, at 900 naira per liter, because I just simply couldn't afford to queue. It's not because I had the money per se, it's because, you know, going to stay on a queue or sending someone to queue for me for hours was simply not an option. You know, so I had to buy at 900 naira per liter in this same Lagos. Uh, you know, so 
this is the legacy that uh, the current president and administration has dictated to us so far. And one can only hope and pray that um, the supposed promise, the supposed reason that all of this is happening, um, eventually comes sees the light of day. Uh, you know, there's an argument that would be pushed forward by um, the administration and its maybe supporters uh, as to why this is happening and why it is necessary. But unfortunately, uh, I'm not particularly optimistic that those things will happen. So it looks as if it was being put to a very torrid time, very hard times, uh, going through a lot of hardship in the face of bad governance uh, for no reason. Hmm. Just listening to you, Tola, you said you had to buy petrol for 900. I think I had to buy 860 naira per liter, but I had to queue for a long time. So it's even a commodity that is not available. Mm -hmm. There's scarcity. So many. I went to about three petrol stations, and most of them were not selling before I found one that was actually selling. But petrol is one thing, even though it is the essential commodity that has um, that has had a ripple effect on most uh, most of other things as well, because when it comes to food prices there's a surge because of petrol when it comes to transportation so it has affected almost every sector but listening to you speak about even healthcare and people not being able to afford this most shelves are not being stocked because a lot of healthcare manufacturing um, companies have even left Nigeria as well now with all of these things that is going on the price hike and stuff the government have come out to say you know we should be patient in fact in the president's address after the end bad governance protest he was saying he has heard us loud and clear do you think that they're doing anything in the best interest of nigerians right now especially with this price hike because it seems like it's from one to another so when you think oh you know what i might just adjust to this because what you said is we've adjusted I mean, Nigerians were resilient people, but do you think that every single time when you think you've rested, when something comes up, is it in the best interest for Nigerians? And with them saying that, you know what, these are just policies for now and there'll be a light at the end of the tunnel, do you think that would actually happen? Yeah, you know, it's, it's a very good question. And um, for many years, I've always been um, an advocate of... Um, um, a society working by 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 uh, people paying their fair share of the cost of running that society and making sure it works. So taxes, you know, um, in most societies that we like to reference, you know, um, the United States, the United Kingdom, the EU, um, other parts of the world, uh, maybe with the exception of you know the the Middle East. Uh, the, the oil-rich uh, Arabian Peninsula and all of that. For most other parts of the world, where, where things actually work, taxation rates are very high. Um, the cost of uh, public services are very high. Uh, utilities, you know, cost of utilities are very high, even though in some places, governments do subsidize those things. Transportation costs high. But in exchange for those, for the costs that you pay, you get seamless, efficient service delivery. You have uninterrupted power. You have um, transportation services that are right on time, reliable, efficient, and safe. Um, you've got healthcare services that save lives, you know, um, regardless of all of the challenges that they all tend to have, you know, in the NHS, you know, um, and the NHIS, in the UK and the US, they do have their challenges. But the services tend to work and lives get saved. Emergency response systems work, you know, all of those things. So when you juxtapose the taxes that you pay and this, the, the, the cost of this government services being high against the fact that the services work, you, 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 you can relate with it and you find, you say it's okay. Um, Unfortunately, in Nigeria, it's not so. So now, the, 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 the thing is, I have always argued that we need to increase tax rates in Nigeria. We need to increase the tax net in Nigeria. Nigerians need to get used to paying for services. We need to stop complaining about paying for tall, you know, tall, tall, tall fees on, on express roads when those roads are very well built and are safe. Um, we need to pay for electricity. We need to pay for water. The challenge is that as you are paying those things in Nigeria, you don't get the services in return. Mm. So now, 
so so for me it's it's a great it, it would have been good if all of these things that this government was doing had been back loaded instead of being front loaded i wish that the government had come on board and made the fundamental changes that are required to deliver these services you want to hike tariffs in electricity for example how about putting in place a framework maybe a, a five-year or a four-year framework a tariff framework that promises investors that by the time certain um, generation and distribution milestones are achieved, tariffs will be moved to certain um, levels or thresholds, such that you are rewarding performance with the increased tariff um, um, structures, such that they can secure financing to fund the development and the infrastructure investment that they need to make based on the understanding that once they make those investments, tariffs will go up because they will provide services that has achieved the milestones and thresholds that have been defined in the regulations or in the laws, you know, in the legislation guiding that industry. We, we, we needed to have done these things in, in, in a planned and structured manner. Mm. What the government has done, fortunately, is that they've come the other way around. They put the cart in front of the horse, the horse and ask the cart to drive the horse. So we're, we're being punished with high tariffs, with high taxes, with high cost of government services without getting the commensurate services and, and, and benefits and reward of this. And this is why it's, it's, it's in such a terrible shame. Hmm. I know that a lot of Nigerians, just like you have said, you know, we're not getting the services. I'm sure if we were getting the services, most people would not mind paying for it. So I don't mind paying at all when I see that you're maintaining the roads. Not that you're giving me bad roads, then you're still asking me to pay for it as well. Even with the um, electricity sector, I mean, 240% is quite a high jump, right? We, how do you move from 68 to over 200? I mean, if it was even increased gradually, that would make more sense. Um, with the fuel subsidy, fine, they said there was a cabal, but I'm sure there are ways we could have gone around all of this. But if you were supposed to, if you were to give um, certain advice, right, on how the government can do other things to ensure that people feel, um, l people feel heard. Because now, if the government is saying, you know what, we need you to tighten your belt, we need you to be patient, how about a day? trying to cut certain things are they not supposed to be starting from them if you're saying that we need to cut costs as a nigerian people shouldn't the government also be trying to cut costs as the nigerian government to ensure that you're leading by example so if you were supposed to advise certain things that the government should be doing how they should go about it for the nigerian people to even be patient with them how do you think they should i i think two things need to happen um, it's extremely unfortunate. It's a tragedy and a travesty the mm. way this administration has gone about um, the optics of the cost of governance. And I say the optics because it's important for people to understand that in order for the cost of governance to be cut to a point where it's significant and it's impactful, the kind of changes that need to happen, I don't think um, any politician you know, that has been produced by the current system will make those changes. It would mean, for example, that we may have to move away from the presidential system and go to the parliamentary system. Mm. Or, if we are retaining the presidential system, we would have to go on real austerity measures, including significant downsizing of the workforce of the government. It means that the civil service would have to be cut down. Um, it means that um, political appointees would have to be significantly cut down. You know, we've got thousands, like literally tens of thousands of political appointees across the federal government and the state government that are drawing on the resources of the government. So all of those people will need to go. Why does the, the, the president need 45 special advisors on media alone? The mm. president's team, the president's media team alone is about 45 people. What are they all doing? Why do we have a jury in Galali and we have Bayo Nanuga and we have um, the Minister of Information, we've got the Director General of the, uh, the National Orientation Agency, and that's just mentioning just four high profile media spokespeople for this administration. There is a huge team behind them churning out information to, to, you know, to the public space regularly. Why do we need all of that in a situation where you are saying Nigerians should be patient? So the travesty for me is that the government, in, the president in particular, 
doesn't seem to care about how people see his actions. So on the one hand, you are saying people um, should be patient, that you know, these changes you are making, this pain that we're going through, we're going to get reward for it. But we are the only ones feeling the pain. You have not even made a symbolic gesture of, you know, just making some sacrifices. How can you, on the one hand, take subsidies out because we don't have enough money, um, yeah, subsidies out of petroleum products, you take subsidies out of um, electricity tariffs, you know, um, you've increased tariffs across different sectors, cost of passports have now gone up. But by the, you, the same person doing all of this, you are, you are buying big shiny toys. You bought um, a plane that cost the country 150, supposedly, 150 million US dollars. You bought a new shiny escalate, beast of the machine, mm -hmm. that any man, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. as a man, you look at that machine and you're like, oh my God, I mm -hmm. want this, you know? Mm -hmm. And that's what our president is doing. Why was that necessary? Why was it necessary to attempt to buy a yacht? We don't even know whether it's been yeah. bought or not. Why was it necessary to renovate the vice president? You know, all of these gestures are, are optics that um, the president must be conscious of. If you are right. saying we need to make sacrifices for the future, then you've got to lead by example. That's one thing. The other thing that I think that the president needs to do is to show clarity of thought and a clear plan, plan towards the destination. Define our destination. Where are we going with all of this? What milestones do we have in front of us? What would we have achieved by mid-term mid of this administration, which is just next year, by the way? What would we have achieved by the end of this, the four-year term? Right. In terms of power generation, in terms of healthcare delivery, in terms of road infrastructure, transportation, what would we have achieved? Mm. And how are we going to get there? What is the plan? What is the time frame? What is the framework that will deliver it? There is a complete lack of clarity and it just looks as if everything is happening randomly and haphazardly. So if we see a clear, very um, articulate plan, and that's well communicated to Nigerians, you know, and you join that with also making sacrifices on your own part, I think people will take these pains and all of these, um, mm -hmm. you know, um, cost of living increases with a bit more um, uh, in, in good faith, you know. But what we're seeing now, nobody's going to to listen to any of these things when it's not clear where we're going with it. And it just, it's as if this man is just trying to inflict pain on Nigerians. Mm. I, I totally agree with you because I can only um, uh, go through a growing pain knowing that there is a plan, knowing that there is something to gain at the end of the day. So I'm just going to be here, take all of it, because tomorrow would be better for me. But if I'm not seeing a clear future where things will be better, then it makes me agitated uh, right now. And that's what has happened with the end bad governance um, protest. Now, with all of this, I mean, the president is supposed to do certain things. The government is supposed to do certain things. The people, what is their role here now? Because, I mean, they're the ones who are facing all of this. The tariffs that are going up, it's, it still falls down to the people. Because most of these government officials, they probably do not spend their money on these things. But the common man in Nigeria, so how how can we ensure that we let the government know that this doesn't work for us? Maybe without protest, but what other way can we do that to just make sure that they hear us? I know the government, the president has said, I hear you loud and clear, but to make sure that we really send a message to ensure that everything they do should be in the best interest for Nigerians, just as we quickly wrap up. Well, that's a difficult question, <laughs> Rumi, because... <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, you have, you have to because, just try and answer it in one minute. Yeah, or so. because, um, you know, our, our government and our political class are not very, very well known and reputed for caring about what people say. The mm. only language they seem to understand are protests. And um, apparently the more violent the protests are, the faster you get a response from the government, which is very unfortunate. Um, so if you say without protesting, what else can we do? Well, we're not helpless, but are Nigerians really ready to do those things? So one, um, we need to let our voice be heard consistently on social media. Because the president has a huge team on social media, mm. you know, combing through, picking up, you know, the conversation, what's happening. And that's why they're able to throw in distractions every now and then. That's one. Two, are we willing and ready to test the freedom of information it's a law, it's there. Um, very few people are using it. 
um, you say, oh, if we ask them, they're not going to do anything. But why don't you ask first? Three, are we willing to test the power of the court? You know, the way Seraph does very yeah. regularly. Imagine if we had um, two Seraphs in every state of the Federation, just testing the waters with the, with the law and trying to compel government to do the things that we want them to do across board, across all tiers of government, in all 36 states. You know, imagine if we had 10 Seraphs focusing on the federal government in total. You know, just imagine the impact. Get going to court and getting court orders repeatedly and all of that. So these are the things that Nigerians need to do. We need to become more interested in the governance process. We need to become more engaged with it, you yeah. know, so that government can know that we're not happy and we may be feeling a bit threatened that, oh, by the next election, this rule will not vote for me mm. with the way they are talking and with the kind of things they are doing. But, you know, Nigerians tend to take it lying down. We are just, you know, and we just move on. You know, it's never going to get better that way. Mm. Well, hopefully things get better and I hope, I hope that that would happen really soon. And I think this is such a great way to end the show. Thank you so much, Mr. Shekin Shekutan, for coming. Thank you for your valuable contributions. It's always nice having a conversation with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you, Ome. My Same. best, everybody. Yes. Yeah. Have a Thanks. good weekend. All right, we're sticking with Shegun Shekwitan. He's a principal partner, Old Woodridge and Scott Consulting. And we're just been talking about the yoke of tariff hikes in Nigeria. Hopefully things get better and we have a Nigeria to celebrate where everybody's flourishing.